I tried. We can get her on there though. <laughs> Forks her a little bit too. That ain't really helping me in my favor. <laughs> All right. Setting up my targets. Welcome back to the homestead, y'all. We're gonna work on some of these firewood bins. Look what, I've been so busy since you've been gone. <laughs> That's uh, two cords stacked up and ready to go in the firewood bins. And then I did figure out that on the bins here, it's best to cut them out so we can reach in. Okay, so I cut all these out. I'm gonna cut a couple of them while you guys are here today. And then we're gonna talk about a couple other things about the bins that could be to your benefit if you're gonna do this. Otherwise, you just hear me rambling on, so. But first we're gonna look at this right here. On the front of these totes usually is like these uh, metal plates. Sometimes they're paper. See, like this one has paper on it right here. Uh, it's like a corrugated type of deal. Like maybe like you see in like a yard sign, right? That they put up for like real estate or something. So what I'm gonna do is on some of these I cannot, right? I have to take them off. Most of them have two and I can only have one because I'm gonna cut the front out. But on the other one, right? I'm a marketing genius. <laughs> well, the other one, what I've done is I got some vinyl stickers made up with the phone number on how to get the wood, and it you know talks about the deposit for them. So if you know somebody finds one of these things, they could turn it back into me and give me a jingle, and I can get the 35 bucks back, and uh, maybe make it twice. So 
That's something that I haven't really seen what many people talk about, but I'm going to use that for a little advertising space uh, for the wood. So if these are going to sit around someplace at a house or a business, who knows what, and you know, people are going to eyeball that, and I want to have the phone number and a little firewood thing on there and a way they can get a hold of us. And this one here, they mostly don't work out like this, but look at this here. This plate has like the square screws. So I'm going to take these two out. And I think I can just kind of lift this up and take it off. And if I can do that, then on one like maybe with the paper, I can put this on that one. And that way I'm kind of recycling them and getting a better display for these other ones. And some of them don't have any at all, so I might be able to use it for that. So let's see how that comes off and check it out. Looks like a 20. There's my 20 there. So, that's Q2. Let's take it. Ha-ha! <laughs> Excellent! Awesome! So that worked out. Now that's kind of a good thing. Some of these uh, totes, the placard on them is not going to be recyclable. I'll show you what I mean. I guess it could be if I had some kind of a rivet thing, but what it is is they have these tabs on them, right? You can see it. And it has like a rivet in it. And then once you bust that off, you can't bend it back around. It's not going to stay on there securely like the other one. Be able to recycle, reuse those. And then, of course, the paper ones, they can just tear off. So those don't work that good either. So on some of those, these, you know, the ones we just did, that might work out pretty good for us. Kind of swapping them around. Now I'm going to get a couple cut and you guys can see the process. Some guys have used the uh, Sawzall, and I find the grinder works pretty good, so just have to do what works good for you. All right. Now, of course, what you're going to want to do is grind down all the little cuts you made, right? You want to make sure there's no burrs on there or any kind of an edge that can snag your clothes or cut your skin, especially if you're going to send these out to people. So that's what I do next. I take the grinding wheel there, turn it on its side, and then just smooth it all out. You know, just little stuff like that can really nick you up. Down here... And then make sure you just go around everything, make sure nothing can snag you and nick you. See right there?
out of those 20 that we picked up I have about five more to go on cutting out the you know grooves for easy reach <laughs> the next up in the wood lot we're gonna bust up the big oaks right here and run them through the Easton made 2228 with this new attachment on it and you guys are gonna really like that so that's what I got to do. I just got to finish up a few of those and then I'll bring them up here and start stacking them up. And you guys are going to want to watch that. Stacy's got something coming up for you guys on some health and nutrition stuff. And uh, we had a little problem with the chickens. So those are the videos coming up. Oh, don't get me started about that stuff behind me. Yep, I've been telling you guys to get ready. A thousand gallons. All right, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you do that. Otherwise, uh, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And leave a comment down below if you got any questions. And I saw that some of you guys were putting the math to the bins. And you figured out that three, just like, it was eight cubic feet short of a true cord, right? But I was just using that as a reference for you guys so you could see how big a cord is. I won't sell three of those as a cord. You'll just have to come and, or I'll deliver a whole cord, like dropped off right there. They won't be in those fancy bins. Those are for people that don't use a whole cord. Maybe just get one or two and then wait one or two, you know? All right, as always, thanks for coming by the homestead. We'll see you guys on the next video. I've been thinking up in Lake City. I've been praying simple me. Homestead instead of my own Nine to five with a suit and tie Going off grid with Doug and Stacy Hi Jenny Breathe, man, breathe. Hi, Jenny. Ha, <laughs> ha,